Experiencing the Stations of the Cross is a powerful way to contemplate and enter into the mystery of Jesus' gift of himself to us. It takes the reflection on the passion out of our heads and, and makes it an imaginative experience. It involves our senses and emotions, and it enables us to experience the love of Jesus and to feel deep gratitude. Deep gratitude leads to real generosity and a desire to love as we have been loved. It gives us a desire to love. From the earliest days, followers of Jesus told the story of his passion, death, and resurrection. When pilgrims went to Jerusalem, they were anxious to see the sites where Jesus had traveled that fateful day. These sites became important, holy connections with Jesus. Eventually, following in the footsteps of the Lord along the way of the cross became part of a, a pilgrimage vi visit. The stations as we know them today came about when it was no longer easy or, or even possible to visit the actual holy sites. In the 1500s, villages all over Europe started creating replicas of the way of the cross with small shrines commemorating the places along the route in Jerusalem. The Stations of the Cross is prayer. The stations are a way to enter into a gifted faith experience of who Jesus is for us. It becomes prayer when we open our hearts to be touched, and it leads us to express our responses in prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you made this journey to die for us with unspeakable love. We have so many times ungratefully abandoned you, and even though we love you and because we love you, we are sincerely sorry for ever having offended you. Please forgive us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet. Master who acts as a slave to them. Jesus, The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. Jesus had already suffered the violence of being whipped and crowned with thorns. Now he is condemned to the most violent death in his day, to be nailed and crucified on a cross. A reading from Rabbi Harold Kushner. Let the rain come and wash away the ancient grudges, the bitter hatreds held and nurtured over generations. Let the rain wash away the memory of the hurt, the neglect, so that we can see beyond labels, beyond accents, beyond gender or skin color. Let the warmth and brightness of the sun melt our selfishness so that we may share the joys and feel the sorrows of our neighbors. And let the light of the sun be so strong that we will see all people as our neighbors. Let us pray. In humility, we ask you to hear our prayer and grant us peace. For migrants and refugees in our world, may we see you in them. Grant them safety and health. Help us to be a welcoming sanctuary. Help us to see each person as an image of you. And especially during this pandemic where anxiety is high and it is easy to blame and point fingers, give us courage to see all people as our neighbors. Amen.
the second station. Jesus is made to carry his cross. Jesus lifts his arms to embrace his cross. He compassionately embraces all of us who suffer pain of any kind. We stand with those who suffer from sickness and addiction, but are denied the necessary medical resources. At the second national convention of the Medical Committee for Human Rights in 1966, Martin Luther King Jr. said, of all the forms of inequality, injustice in healthcare is the most shocking and inhumane. Let us pray. God, suffering servant, we pray for those millions who fall beyond the embrace of our medical care. We pray for those who are able to access medical care and yet still suffer in mind or body. We pray for all medical workers, first responders, nursing home staff, and all those who are working around the clock to provide healing and care during this pandemic. Especially, we lift up our local hospital staff. We thank you for their knowledge and skills and ask that you keep them safe. May the gift of healing be available without discrimination. Assist us as we strive to make health choices available to all. Let us take up our crosses and follow you, Lord Jesus for by doing so, we share in the liberation of the world. Loving puts us on our knees, serving as though we are slaves. This is the way we should live with you. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. The third station, Jesus stumbles and falls. Jesus suffered so much before his death. The burden of physical suffering is overwhelming. Jesus, you continue to suffer in your body for we are the body of Christ. Jesus, when you lived among us, you taught us to pray. As we say, give us today our daily bread. We make that prayer also for the many adults and children who go hungry every day. You fed the hungry. Inspire us to follow your example, sharing what we have with those who have less. You came that we could have life and have it to the full. Our prayer is that this might be true for all Caritas Australia. We pray for the women, men, and children in our community who suffer from poverty and hunger, especially those who are suffering economic hardship and food insecurity due to the economic hardship. We pray for the many generous people in Lake County who donate funds, time, and food to food shelves and for those who work for systemic change and inclusion. We pray for those who provide essential food, supplies, and services during these days of quarantine and social distancing. For employees at grocery stores, convenience stores, pharmacies, banks, daycares, and all other places that keep us secure in our well-being. As we join together in prayer, give us the strength and courage to live simply love tenderly, and give generously to help care for all of your family. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord Fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. Jesus is bruised, Jesus is hurting, he is walking to his death. Suddenly he looks up and he sees his mother. She sees him suffering and she suffers with her child. God said, it is not good for humans to be alone. 
and created the first family. In the family, we experience God's unconditional love. We practice nourishing both body and spirit, just as Jesus taught people and also tended to their hunger and health. We learn when to hold on and when to let go. As our children grow and develop, and this teaches us patience with a capital P. Most of all, families mirror the forgiveness of God. We accept one another through the smallest and the biggest of mistakes. Let us pray. We pray for school staff, parents, and students as they navigate this new way of learning at home and online. Guide teachers who are working creatively from home so that their students remain connected and engaging in learning. We weep for those who suffer because of violence at home or in their community. We mourn for the lives taken due to mass shootings and other acts of violence. We pray for our teachers, administrators, and school boards, mentors in after school programs elected leaders, and all those working on behalf of education and school safety. May they recognize the dignity and worth of every student. May they continue to promote prevention and take seriously their responsibility to protect all our children. Amen. When the woes of life overtake me, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. Simon, a bystander who happened to be in Jerusalem for the Passover holiday, did not know the man carrying a cross to the place of his execution. Still, he stepped in to do what he could to reduce Jesus' suffering. Keep our hearts soft enough to keep hearing the cry of the hungry, lonely, vulnerable, or socially isolated in the homeless. The primary cause of homelessness is a lack of affordable housing. Let us pray for the men, women, and children who struggle daily to find shelter. We pray for the organizations and individuals who provide hospitality for the homeless, for their ministry of compassionate listening, food and drink and acceptance. Rabbi Andrea Goldstein writes, Protect them from all harm and keep them from despair. Open the hearts and eyes of those of us with blessings to share. Unite our voices in a call for justice so that no man need ever lie down for the night on a wooden park bench because he has no home. So that no woman need ever tuck her children into the back seat of her car because she has no home. So that all those who wander and all those who are in need find the shelter and peace they seek. Remind us, O oh God, that we cannot rest fully secure in our homes each night until all your children are at last home. In the cross of Christ I glory, towering o'er the wrecks of time. All the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Moved by compassion, a woman in a crowd of bystanders feels compelled to risk wiping the face of the condemned man. From now on, she will see the image of the suffering servant every time she looks at that cloth. Human trafficking is a form of modern day slavery where people profit from the control and exploitation of others. Pope Francis says, how I wish that all of us would hear God's cry, where is your brother? Where is your brother or sister who is enslaved? Let us not look the other way. We pray for an end to trafficking in human beings and all forms of exploitation, particularly prostitution, forced labor, the harvesting of human organs, the use of children as drug dealers, and the production of pornographic material. Help us to recognize the image and likeness of Christ in every human being, 
conception through sickness and old age and to support their God-given right to life and dignity. I take across thy shadow for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. Content to let the world go by. seventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. In the supreme act of surrendering, he opened the palm of his hand to be nailed to the cross. The one who pounded the nails into your hand, Jesus, did not recognize you. When God chose to take human flesh, he did not come as a priest or a monk, a king or a general, a poet or a philosopher. Instead, he became a death row prisoner, a condemned criminal executed alongside of thieves. And he said, I was in prison and you came to visit me. Jesus, we live in a country that incarcerates more human beings than anywhere on earth. We mourn this tragedy. We mourn that we have made vengeance on public policy adding violence to violence. We mourn the expansion of our jails and prisons. We pray for the health and safety of those who work in the jails and prisons and those living in the crowded conditions of incarceration during the pandemic. Jesus, you come to reconcile us to yourself. Help us to remove retribution and eye for an eye to restoration in defending the public order and protecting the safety of people. May we also work to redeem the offended brokenness. Eighth station, Jesus dies on the cross. In the hours he hangs in agony on the cross, Jesus attends to last things. He pardons his murderers, consoles the good thief, and asks his beloved disciple to care for his mother. His mission of love has been accomplished. He bows his head and gives up his spirit. Jesus said, no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. We remember the men and women who have sacrificed for us through military service, even to the point of laying down their lives, and we pray for those who did not make it home, for those who were wounded, for those who carry scars on the inside, for those seeking employment, for those who are without a permanent home, for those struggling with loneliness or depression, for the spouses, families, and friends of our veterans. 
At a time when many in our country do not have a family member in the armed services, we help us to recognize the needs of veterans. Give our, our elected leaders the moral courage to advocate for our veterans. The Ninth Station, Resurrection. When soldiers saw that Jesus had died on the cross, they pierced his side with a spear. Blood and water flowed from his side, evoking an ancient prophecy. In the prophecy, Ezekiel described fresh water flowing from a temple. Everywhere it flowed, sacred water brought new life. Water is the earth's most abundant resource, and yet so many lack access to it. Close to half of all people in developing countries are suffering at any given time with health problems caused by contaminated water. In his Canticle of Creation, St. Francis of Assisi prayed, Be praised, my Lord, for Sister Water, who is very useful to us, and humble and precious and pure. I praise and bless you, Lord, and I give thanks to you, and I will serve you in all humility. Let us pray. Creator God, whose spirit moved over the face of the waters, who gathers the seas in their places and directs the courses of the rivers, who sends rain upon the earth that it should bring forth life, we praise you for the gift of water. Forgive us for the times we have failed to recognize our relationship with water and when we have sought to control access to water, depriving others of life. First Samuel 25 6 says and thus you shall greet him peace be to you and peace be to your house and peace be to all that you have in these worrisome and uncertain days remember that wherever you are 
Jesus resides with you and offers you his presence and his peace. We pray that as you remain at home or come home from your essential work each day, that your home be a place of grace and safety and comfort. If right now your home is not your actual home, but rather a hospital room or nursing home or some other temporary home, that you sense God's peace and strength wherever you are. We pray that in this time of physical distancing, you are still able to find ways to remain connected to family and friends. We pray that wherever you are residing, that this is a place where you can feel the sunlight, smell spring and the promise of resurrection, and see beauty in every day's simple things. We send you these words of comfort from St. Julian of Norwich. Oh. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manners of things shall be well. For there is a force of love moving through the universe that holds us fast and will never let us go. Be well, peace and all good be with you during this holy week and in the days to come.